Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordeaux. We are the founders of Journey Coaching. We're super passionate about all things coaching and want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training over a thousand life coaches. Dive deep into a more meaningful career, find freedom, and make an impact on the world around you. Hey guys, today's topic is going to be a series, and this is the first in a series a super important topic and a question no one like it all the time, and that is, can I make it as a coach? Noel, good morning. Good morning, my friend. How are, you? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Well, I think that it's a good day to be alive, and we are both bona fide examples of what we're going to be talking about. The real talk, real world, can we make it as a coach? John, have you made it as a coach? Uh, yeah, I feel like I have. You know, it, I um, I also love that you and I have made it as a coach in such different ways. You know, yes. I, and you know what? It what is your so first? Like, let's define what making it as a coach looks like because I think it's different for everyone. Um, some people are going to measure it by you know a number of clients. Some people are going to measure it by uh, you know social media exposure. Some people are going to measure it by having a salary. What 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 do you what do you define uh, as making it as a coach? And then what do you find that most people define that as? All right. So trip down memory lane. Um, back in the early days of journey coaching, uh, when we were just kind of messing around with a concept and we had our beautiful little face group with that first 500 people in it. Do you yeah. remember that time? <laughs> yeah, Facebook, right. Yeah. Right. So during that time, I did a future visioning exercise and I wrote to the group and I kind of charted out, um, you know, what I wanted my life to look like. So for me, um, I'm not really driven by money. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really driven by status. I am driven by um, people I love and life experience. And so when I look at the measure of my life, it's all about the quality of my life. Right. And what I value the most is freedom. And so I wrote that I wanted to be um, a bi-coastal coach. Right, I remember. And I wanted to work on on, on two sides of the country um, and that I wanted to have the freedom to travel as I wanted and see my friends and work with clients and help people build confidence. Um, lo and behold, 25 million plane rides back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> between Philadelphia and Los Angeles and, you know, three companies and a full docket of clients later and becoming a coach trainer. Here I am. Yeah. And so your definition of making it as a coach was more of like this, uh, this lifestyle that you saw this um, going, you know, East Coast, West Coast, um, helping people in the, in the way that was honest to you, but also uh, like you said, everything hanging on freedom, the freedom to, to, yeah. to work your way. And so that's, a, I think that is a super healthy, um, powerful way to define um, a coach making it, you know. So for me, in the beginning, it was very predictable. And, and most people define making it as a coach as having a full practice, um, you know, uh, making six figures or making enough money where you can do it full time. That's kind of what people define usually as making as a coach. And that's what I defined it as. But today, like you, um, that is not my definition. Uh, my definition of making as a coach has nothing to do with money. Um, although, unlike Noel, I do like toys and, 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 <laughs> and cars and, and motorcycles. But um, I, I, I define making it as a coach. Uh, if you could live a way that's honest to you, right? And um, it's meaningful, you know, so you are making a dent. And also it could change, you know, um, what I do today is so different than than, than my day to day, e even, you know, as, as short as two years ago. So starting uh, from uh, heavy blogging, and um, a lot of one on one sessions and stuff like that. And to now today, uh, more media stuff, uh, 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 writing, you know, possibly a book a year. So that's become full time. And then um, managing teams and stuff like that. It's very different than uh, what what I was doing two, two, three years ago. But but they're both making it as a coach. So it's not the activity. It's like you said, it's the freedom and lifestyle and, and kind of the, the spirit of um, 
you know, helping people in a way that, that, that's, that feels organic and, and honest to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this actually reminds me of a piece of advice that my dad gave me a very long time ago. My dad um, started out as a marine biologist mm. and he gave up on his dream and he pivoted and he went to work for the government and he had a long, long career uh, working with the Pentagon and he's very decorated and I respect the hell out of him, but he always regretted that he never stuck with marine biology. And what he realized at the end of his career is that if he had, he would have ended up in the same place at the top of his field. Mm. That's and so, yeah, whatever it is that you want to do, and whatever it is that your passion is, if you stick with it, your journey will change and ebb and flow, but you will eventually rise to the top of your career. And as Jen and I talk about all the time, it takes a while. So thinking about a period of about 10 years yeah. to move from point A to point B, I think is really realistic. And some people do it faster. Some people do it slower. Some people bob and weave and make different choices along the way. And we're going to get into all of these factors throughout this series. And I think there's a lot of valuable information. But you know, before we dive into the numbers, I'd really like to begin with a planting a, a seed of hope mm. and saying that no matter where you're at right now, if you make a commitment to yourself to do things that you love, you will naturally grow. Yes. And um, things are going to happen that you don't know are going to happen today right now. Things are going to um, expand in a way that you can't predict. And you also have to trust that part of it, you know, what I call magic. Yes. I am all about the magic. Yes. I And guys, John and I are awesome and wonderful, but listen, if we can do this stuff, so can you, yeah. because we have looked at each other so many times over the last decade and said, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're not two people who, um, you know, had this master plan. I mean, every, every, I wouldn't even say a year, every six months that's, it's evolving and different. And, and we check in, we're like, where are you at? What's going on? Where are you at? What's going on? And, um, yeah, we're, we're constantly swimming in, in, in the same direction, but also in different ways. So. Yeah, yeah. very much. Yeah. All right. So let's get into it. And, you know, the first thing that I, I really want to express is that when, when you look out into coach land and you look out into social media, there's a lot of noise and so paying attention to the sources where data and information comes from is really important because you're going to see a wide range of figures, whether it's the Bureau of Labor and Statistics or, you know, pay scale. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our sources and where our data specifically comes from our um, coaching bodies that focus on coaching globally. So in our view, the International Coaching Federation, the ICF, which accredits our coach training program, has the best industry information because they conduct global studies every four years by directly surveying coaches all over the world. It's expansive, and they analyze responses from thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of coaches, and we're relying mostly on the research that was published just in 2020. Mm. And then if you're an executive coach, we recommend that you check out Sherpa Coaching's annual coaching survey because they have really great information as well. Yeah. So I like that you're encouraging people to um, go 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 research some of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's important. And we're going to, I mean, we've done the work, so we're going to take a lot of the guesswork out for you. But John, what do you think the average salary is for a coach in North America? Oh man, I'm going to say mm, maybe 60k. You're so close. Oh, yeah. Nice. 62,500 oh, wow. is the annual. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is the the annual salary for the average coach practicing in North America. Mm. So, you know, a lot of times we hear a lot about the juxtaposition of um, similar fields, therapists, human resource specialists, trainers, even real estate agents. So let's look at how coaching compares. So your average marriage and family therapist makes a little over $50,000 a year. Mm, yeah, I can relate to that. Yep. A human resource specialist makes about $48,000 a year. 
a trainer, a fitness trainer actually goes up a little bit coming in at 57. And then if you work as a real estate agent, you're going to be coming in around 56. And so coaching is actually a little bit higher than those other disciplines, which I think is interesting to note, especially given the disparities in um, training and the amount of money and training that it takes to enter those other fields. Yeah. And I'm looking at this and um, as, as a, a, a licensed marriage family therapist myself, that's a long, expensive journey and the return on it isn't that great. <laughs> 50 grand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in in the United States, the average salary across all professions is forty eight thousand yeah. dollars. So, in most you know two income households, average uh, I don't know a little bit over around ninety thousand. So, um, coaching does comparatively offer a very comfortable pathway to living, and um, and. This is the point at where most articles on coaching stop. And so if you're listening to this, don't turn the podcast off now. There's a lot more information that we need you to know before we go on. Right, right. Uh, this doesn't mean that this is what you're going to earn. It doesn't. Yeah. And and there's a lot of different variables that are tied into it. Really specifically, the years of experience that you put in. So just in the beginning, like we were saying that putting the time in pays off. That's huge. So does your personal reputation and the market demand for what you're offering. Well, also, um, and this lines up with my story, what about your side hustle? Because with the internet, uh, you can have different and multiple scre uh, streams of, of rev revenue and your salary can just be one one part of that. Oh, absolutely. And and we're going to get into it. So the average rate per hour, and, and when, you, when coaches typically think of their work, they think about one client for one hour, right? And that's a really easy thing to think about, but that's not everything to think about. So the average rate for coaches worldwide is about 244 per hour, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that sounds great. That's, uh, that's a little bit less than what I charge on an hourly rate. And so that tracks for me. And is that what you should be charging? Not necessarily. Right. And we're, we're going to explain how and why. So coaching rates are directly tied to your specialty and years of experience. And in North America, experience pays. Coaches with more than 10 years of experience on average charge over $300 an hour. Wow. Mm -hmm. And your niche makes a big difference. Business coaches make the most amount of money. So business coaches charge upwards of $300 an hour. They charge usually about 330 per session, which tracks because the folks that I hire to work with as business coaches are right around in that zone. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, they're awesome and they've changed my life. Right. So worth every freaking penny. Um, Why do you think that is? Why do you think uh, with business coaches, um, their rates are higher? Is it because of the demographic? Um, it's mostly because companies pay for it. Oh, right. Okay. So, you know, if we're looking at life coaches, who serve individual clients, um, just being a generalized, non-niche specific life coach, where you might see just life coach on a spot offering, that that comes in around 130 an hour. Right. Got it. That so, and the way to think about this is the consumer, right? And how the consumer thinks about this. So if you are an executive, as I am, and you are hiring a coach because you have a really naughty business problem that you want to solve, and that's going to drive ROI for the company. Um, the corporate entity is going to be happy to fork over 330 per session so that that executive can drive the ROI and get the thing done to support an organization that employs many, 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 many people. And then in contrast, you know, a life coach who might work at a local spa, that service is right in line with somebody who might go to get a massage mm -hmm. on the weekend. Yeah. So between 100 and 200 is is typically what people will spend on those personal wellness services. Right, right. Yeah, I think yeah. that's I, I think that's actually great. That's really good money. Um, one to two hundred dollars. It is. Oh. Um, it's great money. And so, you know, I think, you know, where we go from here is 
is saying, okay, you know, there are a lot of different things that need to be considered in all of this because when you're building a business, it's not just about that hourly rate. Right. Um, you touched on, you know, different forms of revenue streams. And in series number two, once we we get into it, when we start talking about um, different coaching pathways, that we're, what, that's what we're going to explore, is whether you're at 330 per session or whether you're at 130 per hour, um, there are lots of different things to consider. And those are multiple revenue streams, things like books, speaking, apps, brand sponsorships, yeah. training and mentoring, um, content-driven offerings like classes, and of course, clients. So and we're going to tackle. Well, I was going to say that's that's probably the most exciting part for me um, with coaching. And it's not, not not because of the money, because it what it does is it creates a giant sandbox to play in. And that's that's where mm -hmm. I get super excited is, you know, all the different ways that, that you can help people. Let's talk a little bit about what it's like to really do all these different things yeah. because they're the the experience is really different. So if you're thinking about one client to one hour, what's it like for you when you're in session with those clients? I think um it's a training ground. Like I, I think the one on one is needed and you don't have to do it full time. You could do it part time or you know have kind of scattered clients, but I think it's it's kind of the especially as a beginning coach um it gives you uh, the training wheels the confidence and so uh, a lot of coaches uh when they're starting out they have imposter syndrome which is totally normal and it's the one-on-one -on -one sessions where you're in the trenches really helping people um that's where you kind of find your voice your angle your confidence and you be and you become you feel less and less of an imposter i think hmm. and so from there what was your journey like you you built a practice where there was a lot of content and then you were seeing clients and then you built your brand. So what was that transition like to go from, you know, the baseline of producing content and running clients to the next level? Yeah, it was um, exhilarating because I learned that uh, instead of just, uh, you know, doing the one-on-one, -on -one, so you're giving someone an hour of your time or 50 minutes and that there's an exchange there, um, you could actually do something, whether it's a piece of content, an audio course, uh, uh, create some kind of uh, digital or in-person product where you could service more people. Um, so you're maximizing your time, right? So the um, the uh, uh, a good example of that is writing a book because the distribution of the book going, you know, into bookstores and all the different channels. Um, yes, it's not one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching. But in a way, you are coaching people because you're giving them a blueprint or you're giving them something that's going to hopefully create revelations or, or, or new lenses, you know? Yeah. And, and my experience was really different. I started out with a, a focus of really wanting to drive and build a one-on-one -on -one client mm -hmm. based practice. That was my my total focus. I didn't want to create content. I didn't want to be out there in the world. I was scared of being public. Um, and then my life took a series of unexpected U-turns. And I discovered that I could really use my coaching skills effectively from a business and from an organizational development perspective. And so journey was built through the work of coaching, through the work of coaching um, a young team and brilliant people and coaching trainers and coaching our students and coaching each other and bringing myself to work every single day as a coach is what grew our organization from the inside out, yeah. from the, the organizational dynamic structural perspective. And um, that for me has been exciting, exhilarating, a lot of work and really exhausting. And so now I see the work that I do with clients as a vacation. Mm, yeah. And when I go into session with clients, um it's what's required is is so much focus. Right. And so, and this is something to consider when you're looking out into the world and saying, you know, how much do I, how do I want to craft my life? You know, when I'm working as a coach in organizational dynamics, 
life flows in and out. I take meetings, I'm on the go, mm -hmm. I'm on trains, mm -hmm. buses, planes, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. But when I'm working with clients, I'm actually stuck sitting in a chair, very, very focused with a notebook, listening incredibly intently right. to every word, emotion and nuance that my clients are spilling out. Um, and because it keeps me so stuck, I find that I, I can't do that with too much of my time. So I, I really need to keep my client roster to about five clients at a time because otherwise it would just take up too much of my time to physically uh, to physically enact all of those sessions. Um, and then something else started happening where I, instead of wanting less contact with clients, I started wanting more contact with my clients. And I started realizing that instead of just doing one session a week where I was getting the most results as a coach with these folks was with truly building a relationship. Mm. And so that means, you know, text messages throughout the week, pictures of people's kids, um, celebrating wins when they happen, um, you know, having a more dynamic relationship with the five people that I do take on and let into my life. My clients have actually really become a part of my life and an enriching part of my life and 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 something that I look forward to every single week that gives me just as much as it gives them and and I never expected that to happen. Yeah, and what Noel's talking about um is uh, a super important as a coach. I think it's that added layer where uh, you really truly become a guide and a catalyst to someone's life. And so my version of that was where I met them, you know? Um my version of that was uh meet me at the coffee shop or meet me at the lake or meet me at the gym and um, how I went into these sessions, um, you know, more casual kind of the, the jeans and t-shirt guy that, that kind of, beca that kind of became my thing, you know? Um, and, and, and then also just like Noel, the, the, the one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, it became where um, I, I, I did, it was so much time for one person that it, you, you, you end up um, having less and less time, right? Um, and so I, I didn't want to just keep raising my prices because I didn't want it to be about money. So you think of creative ways to help people to, instead of just a one on one. And then and then like Noel, um, I will have a few sessions, but, I, you know, it's not something that I do uh, back to back like I did in the past. Yeah. And I know that we we started out with talking about facts and figures and numbers. And I also want to get really super real uh, about about those numbers. You know, when you're when you're first starting out at as a coach and you're just coming out of the gate, don't feel that you have to charge 130 or you have to charge, you know, 240 just because that's what the research says. When I started out, I started out doing $25 for a session. And then when I started working with John, I jumped to 60. Mm -hmm. And that was actually my sweet spot for a while because it was really comfortable for folks. And this was, you know, 10 years ago, guys. So attack on inflation. Yeah. Um, and then I remember, uh, I remember having the conversation with you. I think it was, there was a little group of us coaches that got together. And I remember I was in my parents' house because I was sitting in my childhood room. And I remember saying, you know, I think I'm worth 90. Mm. I think, <laughs> and, and, and I, and it was really scary yeah, of course. to make that jump. Yeah. Um, and then when I sold my first full price package, it wasn't even me who sold it. It was a colleague of mine mm. who found the the perfect client fit for me and pitched it to this particular client um, at, at the high dollar rate that I'm at now, um, which you know my clients happily can afford and enjoy, and, and we both really enjoy the relationship. But it took a long time, both for me to feel confident enough to push out into the world in that way and then to start finding the right client fit for me. Yeah. And so wherever you're at, it's totally okay. If you're building a side hustle and $60 an hour sounds good to you and that's what works for your community, then that's what works. And that's really beautiful. Yeah. And this is something that I tell um, our journey students because one question I get all the time is, what should I charge? What should I start with? And I, I can't give them that answer, but I can say that it has to be something where you feel good about it. 
You know, if you say to yourself, well, you know, Bob Smith next door is a coach and he's charging $500 an hour. So I should do it too. Um, you can set yourself up for a bad experience. You could feel guilty. You could feel, you know, it's going to, it's going to provide um, um, pressure. And so do what's, feels right for you. And it's also always adjustable, you know, it's not set in stone. It, it is always adjustable. And, and, you know, aside from the pressure to perform, I might add that if, if John Smith charges $500 an hour, um, and, and that doesn't feel right to you, then that client base also is not going to feel right. right to you. Right. So, you know, when, when we're thinking about ethical sales and we're thinking about ethical coaching and we're really thinking about meeting the client where the client is at the best person to ask is your future clients mm -hmm. absolutely and because coaching is a craft and it takes courage and confidence and it is a process uh the worst thing you can do for yourself is set yourself up for a bad experience where you feel like you can't do this and one way to yep. do that is price yourself too high yeah go slow have fun, feel your way through it, know that you will you will rise to the top of your field naturally with time and intention. And I'm excited to get into the rest of this with you guys um, over the next two sessions because it's such good information. Yeah. So in our next episode, we're going to dive into um, different incomes, multiple revenue streams, making money while you're sleeping, all that exciting stuff. Yes. Making money while you're sleeping is amazing. Sleeping is amazing. <laughs> sleeping is amazing, yeah. Make sure you're sleeping while you're making the money because if you're not sleeping, then it's not worth the money. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, guys, be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to Everything Life Coaching. If you're feeling the draw to become a coach, head to journey.co slash everything to explore a new career that brings fulfillment, gives you a true sense of purpose and a strong community to do it in. We created Journey Coaching to equip you with the tools, training and community you need to attain your goals. Join Journey Coaching and begin your journey towards personal freedom and a transformative state of growth today. That's J-R-N-I dot C-O slash everything.